servant dutifully removed all the gold from circulation at that point. This was the culmination of a plan which was many, many years in the making. It didn't just happen. In that year, 1933, all citizens of the United States were ordered, under threat of severe fine imprisonment, to hand their gold in exchange for a piece of paper called a gold certificate. It looked just like a dollar. Except it said gold certificate at the top, and it said in gold coin payable to the bearer on demand at the bottom. What? What kind of gobbledygook was that? I just told you, people were ordered at the pain of $10,000 fine, a king's ransom during the Depression in the 30s, and 10 years in prison to hand over their gold. So what does it mean to tell the same people who had just been fleeced that any old day of the week, whatever one they wanted, they could stroll over to the bank with their paper money and get their gold back? If a bank teller had accidentally given you gold then, and you got caught on the way out the door, you and the teller would go straight to jail. This was neither the, begging, the beginning of fraud, nor the beginning of treason in the banking system, but it was the most blatant example of it in the history up to this time. Later on, all gold coins and all gold certificates were replaced by other pieces of paper called silver certificates, as I was saying. What a joke. If there wasn't enough gold to back the currency, how in the world could there have been enough silver? We were simply moving along the pathway of out-and-out out fraud. And it has only gotten worse, especially in this last decade, with all the banking instruments or investment rules and all the new... Uh, money-making instruments being introduced. What about type 3 money, where the government declares that money is pieces of paper which have no value whatsoever? That is exactly where we are right now. Our money is intrinsically worthless. In the early 70s, the last scrap of silver was removed from the lawful treasuries of the United States into the vaults of private bankers. The silver certificates were replaced by Federal Reserve notes, which cannot be redeemed at all. They're nothing but plain paper, and there's nothing to back them. If you're searching for a reason why you're getting poorer and poorer, and you can't seem to get ahead, and why your dollars are buying less and less, look no further. You've just heard the reason. Spaceman AM640, view from space. As long as people trust in these Federal Reserve notes, they will have purchasing power. The minute people lose confidence in them, they become transformed back into plain paper with no purchasing power at all, not even worth the paper they're printed on. Not a good situation. People think the basis of money is gold. They're wrong. The basis of money is debt. This statement was originally attributed to one of the Rothschilds, expressing a, a simple but immensely important truth. It is the core reality of the current world banking system you and I live in and have to exist with. And it absolutely, without a doubt, leads to pure fraud. If you learn nothing else about money, learn tonight the meaning of that statement. People think that the basis of money is gold. They are wrong. The basis of money is debt. Let me illustrate con concept. Imagine that you borrow a hundred bucks from a friend. You agree to pay him back exactly one year later, and you agree wants more to pay him 10% interest. So he gives you a thousand, you, he, so he gives you a thousand dollars now and, and, and later you pay him back one thousand, one hundred. Simple enough? So, 
Now he'll undoubtedly ask you to sign for the loan. That piece of paper you sign is called a promissory note. It's your promissory note, and that is your promise to pay back the loan plus the interest. Now think about this. That promissory note has value. Do you doubt it? If your friend comes on hard times, he can sell that note, can't he? Sure he can. As long as you're good for the money, that note is worth the face value of $1,000 plus that 100 additional you agreed to pay on as interest. So it's potentially worth $1,100. Whoever holds that note is in position to collect that $1,100. It's most assuredly got value. Your friend would have a hard time selling it for the full $1,100. But if he plays his cards right, he can probably get more than 1000 because it's worth more than $1,000. Suppose, for example, the buyer pays $1,050 for this promissory note. At the end of the year, he'll collect the full $1,100. That's $50 more than he paid for it. So without doing any work, he makes a fast $50. What's wrong with that? The only risk is that you might fail to pay back the loan. So any sale of a promissory note, there's risk. The better you are as a credit risk, however, the more your promissory sorry note will be worth. Space back with more in just a minute on AM640. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect those of AM640. Deprogramming the brainwashed simply by uncovering the truth. He's the spaceman with a view from space on AM640. Spaceman. Two addresses to communicate with me uh, through the email is space at 640toronto.com or spaceman at 640toronto.com. And thanks so much for the ones I've already received tonight. I appreciate that so much. People think that the basis of money is gold. They are wrong. The basis of money is debt. I hope you walk away with just one thing tonight, at least, and it's that, to learn from that. So I told the story of you borrowing a thousand from a friend, ten percent interest. That's eleven hundred dollars in one year. You pay him back. Simple enough. You had him a promissory note. He can sell that promissory note. It actually could be used as money. So it's potentially got value. The promissory note has value. Believe it. Whoever holds that note is in a position to collect one thousand one hundred dollars. And maybe he can't get the full price for it. Suppose, for example, he gets a thousand dollars and fifty for the note. Well, he paid a thousand dollars for it, and he got a free fifty dollar bill, and he didn't do any work for it. He makes the fast fifty dollars. So the only real downside to promissory notes, you see, as having value, is that you might fail to pay the loan back. So in any sale of a promissory note, there's risk. The better you are at a as a credit risk, the more your promissory note will be worth. Now, I told you that story to say this. In case you're not aware of it, know now that the world is full of promissory notes. And that most of them do, in fact, get sold. Loan agreements are promissory notes. Mortgage agreements are promissory notes. And even charge card slips are promissory notes. It is said by those who pay attention to such things that if you pay off a home mortgage and demand to have your promissory note returned to you, the bank will. They will return that promissory note to you. What you'll see is that it is literally covered with Stamps, promissory stamps, because these things are sold over and over and over again. One person buys them and shoves them on to the next person, sells them to the next guy, and they're making money each time it's sold. So what you see is that it is literally covered, the world is covered with promissory notes. Each one attesting to the fact that it was brought and sold repeatedly throughout its life with the stamp on it. Loans are resold over and over and over and over and over. 